the world isn't a stage, you're actually living in a system, an ecosystem, and humans play a relatively minor role in this ecosystem. Um, and rather microbes, especially bacteria and viruses, play a massive but largely overlooked role in, in this ecosystem. Do you think humans made history? No, apparently we're just the host and it's all been the work of germs. From the rise of Christianity to the conquest of the Americas, it's infectious diseases that have shaped humanity more than anything else. Well, that's the case made by Dr. Jonathan Kennedy in his book Pathogenesis. He joins us now. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. This is such an interesting uh, and I think very, very plausible uh, argument you're making. And you actually make it from the beginning that Homo sapiens succeeded because of its relationship with germs, potentially. Yeah, exactly. So I think pathogenesis really argues that we need to transform the way that we think about the natural world and humans' place in it. So if we go all the way back to the book of Genesis, God supposedly created humans in his own image and gave us dominion over the, the earth the sea and the animals. And this Old Testament mentality continues to impact the way that we see the natural world. Um, we see it as a stage on which humans, um, either great men and women or classes play out their roles. But the more we, the more science teaches us, the more we know that the world isn't a stage, we're actually living in a system, an ecosystem, and humans play a relatively minor role in this ecosystem. Um, and rather microbes, especially bacteria and viruses, play a massive but largely overlooked role in, in this ecosystem. And so what pathogenesis does is it looks back through some of the great transformations in the past and it shows that infectious diseases played a really, really fundamental role in these. So we can look at everything from the extinction of Neanderthals 50,000 years ago to the emergence of Christianity and Islam as world religions, the transition from feudalism to capitalism, and the development of the welfare states. And um, this insight makes, I think, for a, a gripping and fascinating historical narrative. But I think it's also really important to point out that it's crucial to um, our future to take this point on, on board. We're now living in a basically a new golden age for infectious diseases. Um, so unprecedented population growth, the encroachment onto into animal habitats, industrial scale farming, and long distance travel, they've all combined to create perfect conditions for infectious diseases to emerge and to spread. So when we look at things from this perspective, COVID-19 wasn't an aberration. Um, it wasn't a once in a lifetime occurrence. It's better seen as a warning shot and we need to really understand this past in order to meet the challenge posed by infectious diseases. But I mean you might make the case I suppose that we're living in a golden age of infection prevention as well I mean you make the case uh, in the book about you know the Black Death for example leads to mobility social mobility in Europe particularly which gets rid of feudalism ultimately leads to people being paid a, a, an honest day's work for an honest day's wage all of that stuff and you get capitalism out of that that's really straightforward largely because the Black Death was something that couldn't be prevented. There was no medicine at that time. We now live in, in an era of super medicine. Does that not impact the narrative sweep that you're talking about? It certainly does have a, have a big impact. I think it's, it's really interesting when we look at it because if we, if we take the public health policies that were in place for the year or so that it took to almost miraculously develop a vaccine, they were pretty similar to the public health yeah. policies that were used in the in the late middle ages in the early modern period yeah. um you know back in those days there were um quarantines so of course the the great city state of, of venice um invented the quarantine and the word comes from caranta the spanish the italian for 40 because that was the number of days that ships were forced to forced to um quarantine outside of the the city and um so i think we we have to be aware that certainly medicines uh, buy us some kind of, of respite, but we also shouldn't be, shouldn't be overconfident. Let's just look at um, anti, antibiotics, for example. Um, they have had a remarkable impact on health the last kind of 100 years, 75 years, but now because of mis, misuse and over, over prescription, something like 1.2 million people die every year from infections that would have previously been um, treatable by by antibiotics, and so um, we shouldn't we shouldn't um, we shouldn't be too overconfident. Mm -hmm.